In this video, we are going to be talking about how to prepare alcohols using a Grignard reagent. So what is a Grignard and how is it formed? A Grignard is basically a nucleophile and it can attack ketones, aldehydes, and esters. It cannot attack a carboxylic acid though and we are going to talk about that in great detail later on in the video. So specifically, a Grignard is formed by a reaction between an alkyl halide and magnesium. The ether here is just going to be solvent, so that's not super important, but when you are writing the reaction, this needs to be written under, um, under the arrow. So you can see that when you react the alkyl halide with magnesium, the magnesium basically just gets squished between the two parts of it. And magnesium um, has a very positive charge, and so that is going to really push those electrons away from it, giving the alkyl portion of this a partial negative charge. And so the alkyl group right here is what is going to act as the nucleophile. Here's some examples of Grignard reagents. We have our alkyl portion, magnesium, and then in this case, the halide is bromine. And bromine is often going to be used for this. Um, and then here's another example using a benzene. And then here's another example using a methyl group. So what does a Grignard do? Here's the mechanism, um, and in the last slide, I talked about how because carbon is more electronegative than the magnesium bonded to it, the R group will have a partial negative charge, allowing it to act as a nucleophile. So with this being said, the R group will add to the carbonyl carbon right here, and in this process, it's going to push this double bond up to that oxygen, giving it a negative charge. So after the first step, we've added an R group, pushed up the electrons, giving the oxygen negative charge, and then a lone pair is going to reach out and grab a hydrogen from water, and that is going to give those electrons back to the oxygen, and so now we have a um, hydroxyl group and an added R group. And those are the two main things that come out of a Grignard reaction. You have a resulting alcohol and you have added an alkyl group. So, when you have an ester and you are using a Grignard reagent, it's going to be a little bit different because you can see in the mechanism why, but the R group is going to be added twice instead of once. So let's see why. So we have our R group right here, which is acting as the nucleophile, and that is going to um, attack the carbonyl carbon like it did in the last slide, pushing up the electrons from the double bond to the oxygen. That oxygen now has a negative charge, but here's where it differs. So um, the electron lone pair right here is going to actually push back down and the um, methoxy group is going to act as a leaving group. So this right here is going to be kicked out when these electrons get pushed back down. And that is going to now leave you with a ketone. And we said that Grignard's can attack ketones. So the whole process is going to start over and the Grignard is going to attack again. And then the rest of the mechanism is the exact same. But this time you are left with an alcohol and then two added R groups. So in this slide, we are going to talk about why um, Grignard's cannot attack carboxylic acids. So the first thing that I'm going to say is that a Grignard will deprotonate a hydroxyl instead of acting like a nucleophile, and this is not what we want, and this is the reason why Grignards cannot add to a carboxylic acid, because we have our carboxylic acid right here, which has a hydroxyl group on it, but this is actually not what's going to happen at all. Um, like I said, it will just deprotonate that hydroxyl group right there instead of adding to it. And also, the Grignard itself cannot have a hydroxyl group on it either. So it cannot react with something with a hydroxyl group, and the Grignard itself cannot have a hydroxyl group on it. For the same reason, it will deprotonate itself. So what if I wanted to make this transformation right here happen? So we have our ketone, and then if we were to add a Grignard to it, that um, oxygen that was the, the oxygen on the ketone becomes um, a hydroxyl group. And then we add one, two, three carbons 
um, and off of that last carbon, we have a hydroxyl group. So is this possible? It is possible, but we must use something called a protecting group. All right, so back to how to add an R group that contains a hydroxyl group. We said before that this Grignard right here cannot exist. But this is really the only way we know that we can produce this product. So how can we make this happen um, with a Grignard that is chemically incompatible? You have to take a few steps. So the first thing you do is you have your alkyl group, which has this hydroxyl stuck to it. So we have one, two, three carbons that we want to add in a hydroxyl group. So one, two, three, and then we have the hydroxyl group. And then we are also going to have that bromine stuck on there because remember the reaction is between an alkyl halide and the magnesium. So step one is to take the alkyl halide and turn this hydroxyl into a protecting group. And I'm just going to draw a box around it um, for now. In the next slide, we're going to see all of the reagents that actually do these steps, but I just want you to get a good idea of what's going on right now. So we turned the alkyl halide, um, the, the hydroxyl on it, into a protecting group, and then you're going to um, form the desired Grignard and perform the reaction. So the next step is to form the desired Grignard, and then one, two, three, and then we still have our protecting group. Let me move this over. So that was step two. And then you would perform your reaction. And then at the end, once you have um, the product that you want, it still has that protecting group on there. So the next step is going to be to turn that protecting group back into a hydroxyl. So now we're going to look at the entire process that we just talked about and all of the reagents that make this happen. So we said step one, you start with your alkyl halide, and this is the same one we just had, and you turn the hydroxyl into a protecting group. And you do this by using something called TMSCL um, and TEA. And this is going to turn the hydroxyl group into something called OTMS. Um, and this right here is the protecting group. So step two is to create a Grignard and perform a reaction. So here we have our alkyl halide um, with the protecting group on it. So we basically just turned this hydroxyl into something else that won't react. And then we um, treat it with magnesium to produce the Grignard. So this right here is the Grignard. And then we are going to perform the reaction to give us our desired product. So we have our Grignard here and we have water um, and that will give us our desired product, but we still have this protecting group stuck on there. So the last step is to deprotect. And in this case, we're gonna use something called TBATH. And TBATH is going to take this protecting group and turn it back into a hydroxide. So that was a lot of steps, um, but the main idea is that hydroxyls cannot be a part of a Grignard. So really you just have to turn that hydroxyl into something else, make your Grignard, use it, and then you can take off that something else and turn it back into a hydroxyl. And this is going to be the way that we can add an R group with a hydroxyl group on it. I hope you found this video to be really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what Organic Chemistry 1 class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.